So today we're going to talk about suction pumps. This is the fifth session in our COVID-19 preparation series for biomedical professionals. So for those of you who are new to Project ECHO, today we're going to um, start with a didactic and then move on to discussion. During that discussion, please react or please respond kindly rather than react. If you disagree, this is um, a safe space for conversation and discussion. We want to keep it that way. Um, please go ahead and test your equipment ahead of time if you can. Um, we've muted all of your microphones, but you can find that button in the bottom left. Um, when we come to discussion, you can feel free to unmute yourselves, but also please be sure to introduce yourself and where you're from before you speak. If you're in a large room, please stay close to your microphone. Um, if you have any issues, you can chat us on the right or you can email us at that email below. As I said, we'll start with a 30 minute didactic presentation between Guna and Dr. Mazershaw. Then we'll move on to a case study presentation from our team at Musoma in Tanzania. Benedicto will lead that and we'll talk about preventive maintenance. Um, and then at the end, we'll open the floor for discussion. And as I said, you can leave questions in the chat um, and you can also feel free to raise your hand and we'll call on you at the end. We're going to review a little bit of what we talked about in the very first session about personal protective equipment and disinfection. Um, what's so dangerous about COVID-19 is that it can last for a very long time on some surfaces, particularly on plastic and stainless steel. It can last for up to three days. Um, as you know, most hospital surfaces and medical equipment are actually made of plastic and stainless steel. So this is something to be mindful of. The way we keep our hospitals virus free is we use um, first PPEs, things like single use gloves, disposable gowns, um, all of these single use pieces will help keep you safe and make sure you're not transmitting the disease when you go home. Um, also remember that gloves and PPEs don't replace hand hygiene, so that's also very important. On the right, you'll see a list of high level disinfectants. Um, these are the kinds of things that will kill viruses and other contaminants on your surfaces. So in summary, make sure that everybody is practicing basic hygiene and social distancing, even when you're attending echo sessions. Um, in hospital settings, please make sure you increase the frequency of things like basic hygiene, use of personal protective equipment as, ne as needed, and then increased frequency of equipment disinfection. Again, the virus can last up to three days on some surfaces, so please be careful. We want to flag a couple of resources that we've been using. The first one is the one that we've been mentioning every single session. This is the WHO Operational Support and Logistics Commodity Package. Um, it tells you exactly what specifications you should be looking for in your equipment and your supplies. Um, the next one is not about suction pumps as we'll discuss today, it's about ventilators. Um, but quite a few brands have put together these training packages on ventilators in particular. You can see a screenshot of their homepage on the right, and there's also an app you can download if you have an iOS or Android device. Um, it goes through service manuals, it goes through a lot of details that we don't cover in our sessions and could be very helpful to you. Um, and you can see the list of brands on the right. Our objective today is to cover the fundamental background, things like main parts and functions of suction machines. We'll also talk about performing preventive maintenance on suction machines, as well as basic troubleshooting and corrective, nation, corrective maintenance. Um, again, this is a refresher course, mostly meant for people with strong backgrounds in biomedical engineering. But if you have questions, please feel free to ask. With that said, I'm going to turn it over to Guna. All right. So basically, Suction pump is one of the important part of a uh, medical equipment that you use uh, for a patient to remove um, fluid from their uh, mouth, all that during sick, sick period of time, all that. So they use low pressure, a negative low pressure to remove uh, fluid from the patient. So they suck through a vacuum uh, pressure, a negative pressure. So 
for example, you, you talk about suction uh, system is like vacuum cleaner, all of these are using a high pressure, negative pressure. So these are basically specification from WHO standard uh, requirement of a suction pump. So um, it's a standard thing that you, if you're going to purchase a new one, you need to fulfill this particular requirement. Application of suction pump is basically removing fluid from a patient as is patient internal bleeding. And uh, during the dentist uh, visit, they're going to use uh, to remove excess fluid from the mouth, all that, and during the surgery. Main part of suction pump, you're going to see a bacteria filter, antibacterial filter, silicon tube, lead to indicate power and, uh, and the system light, pressure gauge, on off switch, and jar to collect all the fluid, and adjustment knob for requirement pressure, negative pressure, yeah? So when you talk about suction pump, normally it work uh, from the patient, a collection point, then you go to the collection bottle through a vacuum regulator, to the suction device. Basically on the last point of your fluid should be on the collection bottle. So that's the point. It shouldn't go to your um, farm or anything. So example of suction pump, that's quite a lot. Uh, that's centralized system suction pump using a negative pressure. And for your Anastasia, AGGS, Anastasia Gas Scavenging System, is using negative pressure as well. And your suction pump itself. You got a single unit suction pump, all that. So that's seven type of suction pump that you should know. You got diaphragm pump, piston pumps, bracelet pump, rotary vein suction pump, thermonic drain, centrifuge suction pump, ventral suction pump. These are type of pumps that you're going to see uh, maybe daily or depends on your hospital setup. So it is the pumps that you're going to see normally when you talk about suction pumps. So when you talk about diaphragm pump, you going to see a system with a cylinder head, valve flapper, diaphragm, and a connection road assembly and pump bearing, all that. So these are very common pump that you're going to see in the hospital setup. So diaphragm pump, basically there, there'll be a, a diaphragm the red color is the air going into the line and uh, been pulled in by the dive, by the piston and the air will go out. The green one is, is going out again. So the, the red one is the negative pressure point actually. And you can see the piston chamber all that. So when you talk about diaphragm pump, you need to know about check valve. Check valve is one of the important key uh, component that you always see inside your suction pump actually. So a lot of uh, suction, if you want to see a continuous pressure suction, uh, suction the check valve play a very important role. So if without the Check valve, you're not going to produce suction continuously. So that's a flap that's going to open and close and create the pressure. So on diaphragm pump, you're going to see a few type of check valve. Some are using 
a ball stopper some are using flapper but flapper is very common in most of the suction pump that you're going to see so flapper normally open and shut from the inside so basically this flapper basically works uh, very important it's the heart of the uh, system so it open and close it basically control the suction line actually so this is commonly used in different suction pump and it's very small component but play a very important role in the diaphragm pump So in diaphragm pump, you're going to see a different type, three different type of diaphragm. So some of it is going to be open surface, flat diaphragm. Some are smooth closed surface. Some are undesired structured diaphragm. So it depends how it work, uh, uh, what type of manufacturer going to use. So maybe the the whole idea of diaphragm pump will be the same, but the flapper will be different a bit and the system configure will be different, but it's a diaphragm method actually. So it's using a piston and flap open and closing the air movement. So you can see the first one, second one, and the third one. That's a different type of the diaphragm. Second one is the piston pump. This is one of the uh, another uh, commonly used generate suction. So it basically it's by doing a piston movement, it, your check valve will go, going to open up and close due to the change of pressure between the check valve. So that's how it works and create continuous negative pressure on the system. So you can see uh, the first uh, picture is the flap. Uh, check valve is open between number one and number three, and the other one is number four and number two. So you can see that when the pressure change, it open and close. The third one is posterior pump is basically commonly used in uh, lab equipment uh, and uh, dialysis machine are very commonly used. So it's one of the uh, common thing that you're going to see in dialysis, uh, some lab device, and your hard lung machine use facility pump as well because it, it's safe to use in sense of uh, your blood cell uh, don't get eat up and you don't break any cells on the blood line. So this method is quite famous actually. And uh, you can see shaft, rotary squeeze the tube, then move the fluid along. You can see in infusion pump as well, they use a similar method actually, by squeezing the tube and you see the uh, fluid moving out. You can do negative and you can do positive uh, concept with this particular pump and most of the pumps are using a stepper stepper motor so easy to control and easy to uh, set the speed limit and the power of pushing is much more better than a normal pump so it's this particular motor need more on electronic circuit all that so how the pressure pumps work is basically it lobs, rotate the squeeze by squeezing the tube and discharging the fluid. So you, it, the suction point will uh, pull the fluid in and discharge by movement of the ring point. You can see the first photo and second one, stress point on the second, and the third one is squeezing the tube and moving out the fluid. The fourth one 
is basically a rotary wind suction pump. It's very commonly used device you found in hospital. Basically, when, when you talk about a centralized uh, pump system, you're going to see rotary wind because rotary wind is quite uh, quite uh, reliable and uh, quite uh, in the long run is much more better than uh, other pump, but you need to maintain and uh, fit the vein movement accordingly. If not, it's going to get eat up. But these are one of the uh, set. When you do a centralized, you're going to see a rotary wind suction pump. But some brand from India, you're going to see they're going to use rotary wind suction pump commonly on the normal, normal small unit and it works fine as well. If you maintain well, it lasts long. This particular unit, one of the uh, very hard, hard working type of uh, pump. So our rotary vein suction pump work internally. There's a two veins and spring that going to push like something similar with a vestibular pump, but it's going to push internally on the ring to create the pressure and to create positive pressure and negative pressure. So you need to know the negative point of it and the angle of movement with the roto. So that how the off center rotary vein produce the different cavity of pressure, all that low pressure part and high pressure part. So caution on typical medical application, this pump are vulnerable unwanted intake of fluid. So you have to be careful with that. For example, it happened if someone hook up a collection bottle backward, the fluid going to go into the pump and can burn the pump itself. So when the fluid go into the pump, it's going to seize the particular movement and damage the motor and blowing up the fuse. These are one of the common problem that rotary wind suction pump that I used to see in the hospitals. But if you maintain properly and you do it in the right way, you're not going to have, have uh, a problem at all in the long run. Number five is turmeric drain. So these are very uh, commonly see on certain department, not all the hospitals, but certain department that perform gastric procedure and uh, using a heat and non-moving part, it create a pressure in the chamber itself. And very rare on breakdown. Only, only problem that you're going to see is the damage if the fluid enter the chamber. But other than that, it's very rare to break down actually. Number six is centrifugal suction pump. Use a motor to spin the rotor and provide area, low pressure and high pressure. So it's not commonly used in hospital, but sometimes if you want to get done certain solution, this will be a good idea to use it actually. Number seven is ventrial suction pump. Suction method. So a ventrial pump makes use of ventrial effect generated by I I flow of air on the system and you exhaust out the air at the same time you do a vacuum intake that's where you create a vacuum movement on the system so when your air flow change your vacuum pressure is going to change as well so that's how it works we call it ventrial effect by doing this T method with a small intake vacuum intake and two airflow and exhaust. So this is how the ventral suction look like. When velocity increased, pressure drop, and you got atmosphere pressure is going in through a on a T section. That's where you create the suction point. If you got a compressor, you can do this particular method to do cleaning all this. It works very well, but on fluid, you need to know how you want to do the controls. 
So it's normally you want to do a, a baking method. This is one of the best way actually. So recap of seven type of suction. Most required electric motor include diaphragm, piston, pressure, rotary vane, and centrifuge. Some have no moving part except valve. These are like thermometric ventry. Ventry need compressed air but require no electricity. So these are seven types of suction that you're going to see commonly in hospital and some other places. Very important, if you maintain properly, this device will work for many years and most maintenance involve inspection, cleaning and lubricant, all this. So it's very important to do this particular maintenance. Working principle, some useful convention for units for pressure. The reason you need to know is because sometimes you're going to see a different brand of suction pump with different unit they're going to use. So very important, you need to know the unit con conversion. At the same time, you need to know when your altitude change, your pump performance change as well, and the pressure, pressure line change as well. So you need to know that very important because sometimes you think your pump can perform 700 but actually when the altitude change the pump may be perform only 500 only remember that so suction circuit suction is equal in the all point of circuit fluid able to travel freely so if the tube leak one point you're going to get less or no suction in the particular area so it's very important to make sure you troubleshoot the suction equipment and uh, once the suction generate remain until the fluid allowed to move either through the tube or valve or leak if you see the suction diagram, you can see how the movement of the fluid is from the nozzle and it traveled through your reservoir jar and you got cut off valves. These are basically very important part of it. You have to remember most of the user that clean this reservoir jar they intend to remove this particular cut of valve. So eventually when they remove this, it's a bad news for people who are doing maintenance. Eh? So it's supposed to be when the reservoir jar is full, the, this particular cut of valve will stop the pressure. So the, water, the fluid won't travel to the pump. So you don't get the pump, broken pump, all that. So the filter is very important. You need to keep it uh, changed on a certain period of time. So if not, it'll coagulate, it'll get blocked, all that. So that, that's where you get problem. So you can put a pressure gauge on the jar. You can check on the jar point and you can check on the pump point. So these are particular two points that you can check whether your pressure is equivalent or any leakage. If there's a leak on the jar, you're going to see a low pressure at the jar point. If, if any changes on the pump area, you're going to see a low, low ne negative pressure on the, on the pump. So you, you can break up the troubleshooting easily by doing this. So suction pump, clinical user error. So once the suction pump is running, it, it will start to take liquid from the patient and blood or what, limb fluid 
or whatever that coming from the patient uh, fluid through the system it can cause number of problems include transfer of disease blockage damage to the pump overflow overflow is due to the issue with the stopper for this reason if necessary to keep all the suction device separate from the patient so always isolate them once you are done keep it at the side and make sure all these particular issues need to be um, look after like blockage damage of the palm all this so that's the reason you need to do a maintenance so how to do with this is basically So collection bottles, how to prevent overflow. Suction pump fluid is collect. Most of the fluid are collected in this particular bottle. So you are separating the fluid from exposed outside. You are collecting into the bottle, and fluid are contained safely and uh, protection against many problem. So it doesn't expose and contaminate or blockage uh, that particular system. So, bit. So when you see um, a fluid, should be always in into a collection bottle and should shouldn't go to other side of the pump. So very important is you can see example of that and that the the guy tried to catch and that's a muslin is to block from the end moving towards to the person. So that's how it works. And the collection bottle, when the fluid, fluid getting into the collection bottle, it should stop overflowing. So that's uh, one of the very important actually. Okay. So collection bottle, that's, Two type one is disposable single use another one is reusable so disposable basically once you use you have to dispose it because you cannot use anymore reusable basically you can you reuse a glass one or good quality plastic so that can stand for high temperature or chemical use do, during the sterilize so it, it can be sterilized all that and you can reuse back make sure when you the reusable when you clean all that make sure that you keep the particular floating uh, part back into the system if not you're going to get overflow on the pump so the protection suction for suction pump is you can see a floating circuit at the inside the bottle so when you fill up a bottle, the collection bottle must have a method of protecting the suction device, basically the palm itself. So that's uh, very important. Normally the user going to do what? When they cleaning up this particular device, they're going to remove the cover. Eventually they see like, like a small, small table tennis ball or ping pong ball that they're going to throw away. They think, oh, I don't need this. But actually that is a protection circuit for the suction pump to avoid from the fluid travel to the pump itself. So that's very important. Measuring suction pump. So this main thing you need to remember in your suction device, you're going to see a pressure gauge that can measure the pressure when you lock them, you kink the tube, you're going to see a pressuring, negative pressure. So you can see a measurement in PSI, MMSG, KPA, some of China made using is a million Pascal. So it depends on the units. Each brand they got, you know, unit measurement but most of the pump are inside the same range of uh, pressure actually 
preventive maintenance. When you talk about pre preventive maintenance, it's basically safety for patients, staff, and visitor, and the BMAT itself, biomedical engineer itself, to make sure that you look after your medical equipment, uh, life cycle, increase the life cycle, and reduce the cost, avoid operational difficulty like the suction controller is not working properly all that you can avoid by doing a proper maintenance and comply code and standard of regulation test tool and cleaning material basic when you talk about test tool you need safety analyzer digital pressure meter or pressure gauge multimeter these are test tools that normally you need when you do a preventive maintenance for your suction pump. Preventive maintenance, you have to do comply with quality tasks, physical inspection, visible tests and cleaning, electrical safety tests, verify electrical safety of the system, verify the performance of the suction pump itself whether it's performing into inside the range that required. Visible test, ensure the electric plug cord is good condition, check the collection bottle, jar crack, chip, other damage, check the float valve, move freely, ensure that anti-static tubing is used. Cleaning, clean the outer surface of the equipment itself, with non-membrane cleaning, remove the collection bottle, check if it's single use or multiple. Multiple, you need to send it to sterilize according to the manufacturer recommendation. Single use, you have to dispose in the proper, proper area. Cleaning. Cleaning air intake filter, you can use a solution of water with detergent and de impact sterilized jar, tubing, other component into contact of with the patient fluid, and the tubing need to be removed. It's normally the tubing that you use on the patient is a single use, need to dispose. Change the bacteria filter if wet or discolored, make sure the sufficient supply of Bacteria filter, clean and brush on the motor and uh, make sure it's not, it doesn't have any moisture or anything. So make sure that part is very important. Electrical safety. So when you talk about electrical safety, some suction pump, they got class one and class two. It depends, some using a 12 volt. Uh, Power supply, you ended up going to be a class two device. Class one is basically the body's metal, all that, and uh, depends on the standard you use. So, very important you have to do the ground testing, shouldn't exceed more than 0 0.3. So, these are according to IC standard 60601 and 62353. If you talk about 60601, it should be somewhere 0 0.2 and 62353 3 requirement is 0 0.3. So this is inside that particular range. And maximum chassis leakage current ground wire should not exceed more than 300 micro amp. So EST checklist, you need, need to check main voltage, device current, Earth resistant if it's class one device, insulation test you can is optional. Depends on your test tool device itself. Earth leakage current and enclosure leakage current. You need to comply this particular test for electrical safety. Performance verification test. The test that you need to perform is by using a digital external pressure comparing with your suction pump pressure. So when you compare, you need to write, write down the reading 
on the digital pressure that you external digital pressure reading and comparing with the in the suction pump pressure itself so by comparing and uh, following with the checklist it should measure beyond 500 mmsg or according to the certain standard so when you perform a verification test ensure the vacuum work over the full range of the suction pressure if the control knob measure if the there's a control knob set to maximum and measure and re record the vacuum reading and verify overflow valve float valve is working properly when the container is filled with the water so you have to fill up a water and see the safety valve on the on the bottle itself working properly so that won't affect the motor and make sure if the motor is noisy make sure you need to lubricate them all that check any fluid spill in the system clean event split of the fluid if necessary clean them up all that so testing with the digital pressure so you have to connect the digital pressure and uh, to through the bottles then you can can uh, compare the reading between the suction pump and the digital pressure meter itself suction pump checklist you can see the suction output so the unit of measurement is mmsg set to maximum and uh, take the measure measured value and the gauge reading from the device itself so you need to have above 500 mmsg above so you need to see if your suction machine using different unit of measurement you can change the checklist accordingly so lower setting you need to set your flow to lower and see what's the measured value on the digital pressure meter and your gauge reading on the suction pump itself so it's if these two pass basically the suction pressure can be adjust so you can tick yes if this particular reading are pass troubleshooting and maintenance common problem that you're going to see is leak in the circuit pump is it is it create enough negative pressure collecting bottle overflow to the pump so basically float valve is fail pump failed to work pump is working but not producing pressure no leaking these are basically your check valve issue unable to turn the unit on this can be due to the pump uh, fail or fuse fail or switch or fluid in the pump itself common problem clot leak motor failure when you leak you're talking about tube leak jar lead leak bar, bad o-ring that's maybe possible o-ring can be on the jar itself that particular o-ring uh, may be missing tube block blockage or kink missing damage part you can see a pump that the photo itself showing a pump full with unwanted fluid eventually it become dry and uh, the pump is failed actually bad motor bad power supply missing and damaged collect collection bottle missing and damaged filter clock bacteria filter so these are one of the common problem that you're going to see another common problem you can see is float valve close air pathway full with 
collection jar insufficient pressure on the suction insufficient can be due to the leaking or due to the pump itself the check valve is not working properly ventilate ventilation grill is obstruct so the air is not moving into the into the the suction pump itself so you're going to get heat up all this suction control knob set is low setting some places suction knob can go missing as well so when missing you're not going to create any pressure your pressure is going to stuck in between or sometimes suction suction control knob cannot be used due to previously there's a fluid went through the particular area and the knob stuck and you cannot do any adjustment so diaphragm need to clean and replace brushes need to clean so all these are very important motor need to be lubricated this these are one of the important thing because when your motor get fluid in and become dry the motor need to be readjust back the bearing will be very tight so you need to use lubrication to make sure it becomes smooth common problem again you can see a jar full with a patient fluid overflow is shouldn't go beyond the protecting device if it go through that particular area you're going to destroy the motor with the pump another common problem this particular unit cannot power up so what happens is uh, blown fuse eventually we found out the transformer failure so the solution was rewinding the transformer and replace the fuse and we test back it worked well so this is one of the problem that you can see and inside part of suction pump you're going to see very important the motor air intake pump the air exhaust from the pump grounding ribbon grounding plate electrical in input etc vacuum regulator vacuum gauge air intake from the collection container so this is the in negative pressure input going to the the jar so you can see the air intake pump of this so when the fluid if your jar is not working properly is going to go through the air intake from the collection container and it's going to pass the vacuum gauge from vacuum gauge is going to go to the air intake pump then ended up into the motor and you're going to spoil basically one two sometimes you're going to break the power supply as well so three item maybe you can break in one go so very important advise the user to take care of the collection jar with the protection system power supply some unit they use a switching mode power supply some of it they're going to use a transformer with the battery as a backup these are basically the small unit device that you're going to see and common problem is fuse blow on the particular power supply is one of the common thing that you're going to see sometimes fluid ended up on the power supply and uh, it fails suction diagram again we're going to see a suction diagram we need to know this particular method and alternative position of pressure gauge that you can measure you can measure from the reservoir jar and you can measure after the water near to the filter so by doing this you know where exactly the real leak if 
if from particular if you have a digital pressure meter you're going to measure from near to the filter and you see the pressure is good that means something wrong with your water trap and reservoir jar section maybe there's some leak if your pressure is good from reservoir jar that means the circuit is good so this is how you do tr easy troubleshooting and you see the diaphragm type of pump you need to take care with the, the with the check valve so diagnostic flow chart you can see how to start with the testing you can check uh, if the when you turn on there's a noise you need to do some troubleshooting with the motor or something like that sometimes you get stall noise the pump is not moving but there's a vibration that means something wrong with the bearing or lubricant issue so you need to open up and check sometimes the diaphragm itself not working properly because of the fluid Okay, Aaron. All right, thank you, Guna. Um, so we're gonna go on and unmute the Musoma team so that they can speak and then they will share with us a preventive maintenance. Give me one sec. We're going to share with you uh... <coughs> One of our experience in doing uh, preventive maintenance for uh, sanctions machines. So you can go to the uh, to the next slide. So uh, these are the procedures uh, to be taken uh, 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 during uh, doing a uh, preventive maintenance. The following are the procedures uh, which are to be taken uh, when you are doing preventive maintenance of sanctions machines. You have to do physical inspection. You have to do an uh, electrical safety check. You have to do a performance uh, check. You can go to uh, the next slide. So for the physical inspection, uh, involves uh, checking all physical conditions of the unit, the sanctions unit. So you can see uh, unit housing, power cords, you can see bottles, tubes, and etc. Yes, as the pointer shows and indicates. So now uh, the uh, <coughs> physical inspection checklist guides you on how now you can uh, you can you can you can you can see uh, or you can see. Uh, the physical condition of uh, the sanction machines according to standards. They can be uh, the manufacturer's standards or they can be uh, the standards from uh, healthy organizations, trusted health organizations. So for physical inspections uh, to sanctions, these are the checklists which uh, we normally use. And that is a sanction from uh, Operation Theater, uh, which is in Musoma, the serial number and the manufacturer. So uh, for physical inspection now, you can see uh, housing. And uh, the point now, the, the, the second point, it uh, explain to you how the housing uh, is supposed to be. So what you have to do as an engineer or technician, you have to see that uh, reason which they have given you uh, for housing and tick if it pass or, or if it fails. You can go to the uh, next slide so I can show them well. So you can see uh, point number B, uh, number two is fastener, uh, blacks, AC plug. You can see uh, code, strand leaf, fuse, cables, and etc. So for uh, the suction machines which we have, it passed. You can go to uh, the next slide. Yeah, you can see now uh, the switches. You check the physical condition, examine for controls and switches. Uh, they are free to move and stuff like that, which passed, indicators, display, label. So this checklist now guides you uh, on how now the uh, physical uh, condition of uh, the sanctioned machines uh, is supposed to be. You can go to the next slide. So now you can see uh, the technician, oh, sorry, the previous one. 
Yeah, so now you can see now, uh, those are the remarks of uh, one of our engineers, uh, Ms. Gradius Peter, uh, who did uh, the physical inspection and it passed. So you have to light there as an engineer to make sure that the physical conditions are according to uh, the manufacturers or according to health uh, organizations. You can go to the yes. So now the second now point, uh, the procedures to do effective preventive maintenance, you have to do electrical safety. Electrical safety is the main important condition to sanction machines due to the hazards that can be caused by electric current. That one there, which you see is uh, our electrical safety analyzer, which we use. So what you do, you plug uh, the electrical safety uh, to the uh, supply and the sanction machines takes uh, the supply from the electrical safety so that you can do the following to the coming checklist. Yes, as the pointer indicates, you can move back to another, uh, yes. So now you can see, uh, after doing those connections, you can see now how to use now uh, uh, the checklist to, to perform uh, electrical safety. So this checklist now guides you uh, on how to do it, on how to do it effectively. Uh, the first point, uh, you, you measure the main voltage, which is indicated there. That's for our sanction, which we have in uh, one of our operation theaters. It was uh, two, uh, 230 volts. So you can measure now device current because the sanction machines is connected to the uh, electrical safety and the electrical safety is connected to the power supply. So the electrical safety can know the current to which they, your, your sanction machine is using. You can see there. And you can test also the ground or uh, the, 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 the ground uh, wire resistance. For that san sanction, definitely, thank you. For that sanction, it was class two. Class two, our engineers are well aware of it. Class two, uh, we didn't measure there because class, class two are highly protected. So you can do uh, insulation test, you can do uh, earth leakage current. You can see the measured values there. So the measured values for uh, earth leakage current for normal conditions, uh, it, it led uh, 15 microamperes, which was uh, according to the tolerance. This checklist is the checklist which we use uh, to do uh, electrical safety for sanction machines, it's worldwide. So you can see it, it, it falls under that tolerance uh, for earth leakage current, for enclosure leakage current, you can see uh, all the parameters Time is too short to explain uh, all of them in details, but you must have the checklist to help you uh, using your uh, electrical safety analyzer more well. Ellen, you can take me back to uh, to uh, uh, two previous slides. I want to verify something to insist. Um, go back. Yes. So uh, this checklist, it has uh, the other parts which are not filled. This is the standard checklist for uh, all medical devices. So for sanctions machines, they don't have uh, the applied parts. Like uh, the patient monitors, they have the leads which you connect them to, uh, to patients. Sanction machines, it doesn't have. That's it. That is why we didn't fill uh, this part. So you must make sure that you have this checklist. Now we can go to uh, the performance. Yeah. So performance test, uh, we use, uh, we have a digital pressure meter. That one is the one which we have. It's used to check uh, the performance of sanctions machines. We use DPM4, uh, which is used to measure air pressure to the equipment that is associated with oxygen, like uh, with, uh, with pressure, like sanctions and oxygen concentrators machines. It measures negative and positive pressures. And you can see now uh, the sanctions output. One of our fellow, uh, he, asked the, he asked these questions uh, from uh, the chat. What are the outputs, uh, the standard outputs, the range? So you can see there, those are the range. For high setting sanctions, it has to be greater than uh, 500 milliliter of mercury. For low setting sanctions, it has to be less than uh, 50, uh, 50 uh, milliliter of mercury. So that is the connection. 
That is a connection which you have to do. It has three parts on it, on top of it. Ellen can show that. The negative flow, yes. Uh, we have the negative flow and the positive flow, and that uh, middle part is where we use to check the pressure as the, the yes, definitely, as that point uh, indicating. So now, uh, after you have done those connections, you must have the checklist to make sure that uh, you, you, uh, they follow under, under the standards. You can move now to the next slide. So uh, that is our checklist which we use uh, to do a uh, performance test for uh, the sanction machines. And this sanction machine, it was uh, from uh, operation, operating seed. And those are the, are, the, are, the, are the leadings. After doing that, those connections, those were the leadings. So it, it shows it was 506, which is greater than that one. So it passed. And now you can go to the low uh, setting sanction. Yeah. Yeah, which, uh, which is five. Uh, we, uh, we have still in most uh, of uh, the standard, is like it has to be less than uh, 50. So it was less than 50, then it passed. So you can see now how the checklist helps you with your uh, uh, test equi equipment to do uh, effective preventive maintenance. So you can see now uh, the performance test, or, okay, the performance test was uh, successful and it, it passed. Uh, the device which we use was uh, DPM, digital pressure meter. And the one who did it uh, was uh, Mr. Emmanuel Francis. So that's, that was it. So now we can show you the uh, common problems associated with suction machines. But you must make sure that you use the checklist and use the test equipment to have uh, better results. So these are the uh, problems associated with suction machines. Uh, machines does not turn on, no power at socket outlet. Power cord is broken or damaged. Uh, issue is on and off switch. Fourth switch, disconnected wires. Uh, PCB, PC, uh, PC boards, damaged or uh, loose connectors. Let me go to the next slide. Yes, uh, low or no sanction output. This problem can be caused by, uh, it can be filters, maybe blocked and need replacement, check a fluid filters, sanction bottle leakage, pump of failure, disconnection or misconnections of the tubes. Yeah, you can go to the next slide. Poor handling. Poor handling may cause uh, sanctions, uh, sanction bottle uh, leakage power cables breakage, tires breakage. Use ILA. Use ILA can be caused by lack of training, overconfidence. You can go to uh, the next slide. Thank you. That was all from Musoma. Thank you so much, Eli. Thanks, Benedicto. Thank you very much. Um, so we'd like to transition into the last phase of our call. I realize we're a bit past the hour, so feel free to jump off if you must. Um, but we do want to open the floor for questions. We're also going to launch that poll that we mentioned at the beginning. Again, that just gives us better feedback so that we can make these sessions more relevant where we can. Um, there are quite a few questions in the chat, so I'm going to go ahead and start with those. Um, the very first from Anthony. You know, what is the standard output pressure needed for the suction machine? Okay, the uh, suction you need somewhere 500 mmAg, but for adults you need somewhere uh, 200 to 350. That's very commonly used. And for neonets, maybe somewhere uh, 5 to 10, some of it for for certain reason, you need to have 15, so it depends. But 500 mmSG is good, above 500 mmSG. Good, and that does depend on altitude a bit as well, correct? Yes, yes. All right. Uh, next question is from Nehemia. Um, is the tennis ball that we use for overflow single use, or can we use it again? Um, she suggests that it may be contagious. The tennis ball, 
is standard part of the of the bottle itself so it's a multiple use when you clean the bottle itself you have to clean the tennis ball or i used to call a table tennis ball or ping pong <laughs> ball yeah the intent to remove that particular part of it i i don't really get it why they remove but it's is a multiple use if the if the bottle is a multiple use Okay. She also asks, uh, most of the time the pump fails, if, or most of the time if the pump fails, leakage is the main problem. Um, how can you avoid liquid entering the pump? Can you cover it? And I think someone else asked also that um, some jars don't have float valves at all. Is there something we can add to make sure that the pump does not overflow? Okay, if we, if we don't have a float pump, basically, a uh, very important thing that you can do is make sh make sure you use it 80% of the bottle uh, of the bottle part of it don't don't try to fill up full so you use just 80% of the bottle so you can uh, when you take a fluid maximum 80% not until it full when it full it start the fluid start to uh, flow through the trap and going to the pump. Somehow it will start to move. And that sounds like it might be something that you would need to train clinical users to do as well. Yes. I have a couple questions about low pressure. What can cause low pressure output in a suction machine? The pump low pressure it can cause because of the diaphragm or the check valve is not working properly anymore or maybe uh, each piston pump on the on the suction machine they, they have like two or single depends but if you got the single one one of the check valve is is broken or not working anymore so that will give you a very low pressure actually that's on the pump section but if you're measuring from your uh, jar section it can be a o-ring missing or the jar itself got any crack or leaking that can cause uh, leakage as well awesome thank you and we may want to show that flow chart um, right at the very end i think we had a troubleshooting flow chart that could also help if you're troubleshooting and not sure quite what's going on. Yep. Yeah, there it is. Thanks, Benjamin. Um, we have another question from Philagot. Um, can you please clarify the approach in regards to the lubrication and cleaning of the motors? And also, Guna, I don't think we mentioned very many materials when we talked about preventive maintenance, so maybe you could discuss different brands and things as well. Okay, when you talk about uh, lubricating and uh, cleaning the motor, uh, very important, you need to re remove the particular top part of the motor and uh, you need to have a gasket uh, seal as well because sometimes what happens is when the fluid go in, the, the O-ring seal may be already broken or you need to replace the O-ring seal if you can get. If not, you can get a gasket uh, application and uh, put a gasket application on the particular pump on top and uh, make like a new replacement o-ring so that will help to stop the leakage so you need to remove all that and clean it and put a gasket uh, liquid and seal the pump again properly and put it back as long as you're your check valve is not bro broken and your diaphragm piston is is still okay the diaphragm seal normally you're going to see the number c the diaphragm the rubber part of it as long is clean and uh, not broken you can reuse them back if these are broken you need to replace 
and uh, the E part, you can see on the E is the pump bearing. You need to lubricate at the pump bearing. That's where normally it gets stuck because of the fluid. And it's the same method for other brands also. All the brands, they got a piston and the pump bearing. Good. Um, I want to go back to a question I have asked earlier. Um, so if there is no mechanism to, in the, um, if there's no float valve mechanism, um, is there any way to add a sensor that will just automatically shut the pump off? Is that common in newer models? Um, is there a way to implement that afterwards? Most of the suction pump that I see, that's a that's always a mechanism to stop float float valve stop. Mm -hmm. So if you already remove a float valve uh, missing or something like that, you can buy them separately. Certain place they are selling that particular part actually. You can go back to that particular brand and uh, you can buy from them actually. So they have that particular part. It's like accessories as well. Sometimes people intend to throw it away so you still can buy. So it's like a connection. That's good to know. I think we've reached the end of the questions in the chat. I'll leave another minute for people to finish that up. And if you haven't taken the poll yet, please go ahead and do that as well. Benjamin and Guna, do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, for me, it's important when you deal with suction pump, take care yourself, make sure you use glove as safety first because you're dealing with human fluid. So protect yourself first. Thanks, Guna. Yeah, Aaron, thank you so much. Um, thanks to everyone who's joined. As Aaron mentioned, if you can finish the poll for us and give us some feedback on what more you would like to know specifically about suction pumps, um, that will help us in curating future sessions. Um, and to echo Guna's, uh, what Guna said, um, you know, it is extremely critical to make sure that you um, wear PPE when dealing with suction pumps um, and also don't attempt um, to conduct preventive maintenance or troubleshooting when the collection jar is full. Uh, so make sure you, you know all of that is emptied and cleaned out before you start turning it on and you start uh, checking for leaks, things like that. So uh, take good care of yourselves um, and, um, and we're, we're looking forward to the next week's session as well. So uh, Aaron, over back to you. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. We'll talk about infusion pumps and syringe pumps next week. Um, and then after that, we'll start going through these equipment types again um, and cover some more details where we noticed that people asked quite a few questions. Um, so we'll, we'll get back to you with a more detailed schedule later. Um, as always, you can expect to receive the link to the video um, and the slides afterwards. If you have any questions, feel free to email us and we'll see you here next week. Thanks, everybody.